For centuries, humans have been growing alongside our botanical brethren. Our histories have mixed and mingled to bring us modern medical marvels, faded folklore, and everything in between. Of course, in order to understand the plant, we have to start with its roots. I'm M. Grebner Gaddis, and this is Rooted. Hello, and welcome back to another week of Rooted. This week, we're continuing our Monster Mash mini series by taking a closer look at an ancient trend to literally die for mummies. We'll do a quick overview of how exactly mummies were made, then we'll dig in deep to the different herbal elements and how exactly they worked. So, without further ado, let's dig in. First, let's get clear on what exactly mummies are. They are the preserved bodies of humans or well-respected animals from Egyptian, Incan, Australian Aboriginal, Aztec, African, and even some European cultures. There are all kinds of different methods and rituals that were involved with mummification, and each culture had its own unique reasons behind why they would want to preserve the body. Today, we're going to be mostly focused on the general process, but a lot of this information is going to be specific to the Egyptian practice of mummification because we have the most information about their process, and they have the best preserved mummies, which helps a lot in terms of research. The ancient Egyptians mummified highly respected members of society mostly, as well as holy animals like cats and crocodiles. But this was not a closed practice for them, meaning that if you could afford to be mummified, you absolutely could be. You just wouldn't have nearly the amount of fanfare, or later, fan fiction, around it. The main reason for mummifying was to preserve the body and prepare the spirit for their journey into the afterlife. A lot of the steps we'll be going over had a purpose beyond preservation, tied directly to what they believed would be needed to not just be comfortable, but successful in whatever life is just beyond this one. For starters, this was not a quick thing. Some reports say that the process of making a mummy could take up to 70 days. They started by carefully removing all of the internal organs, taking special care to remove the brain as they did not want to damage the face. It was really important to them that they stay looking as close to what they did when they were alive as possible. After all the organs were removed, they were preserved and stored in separate jars called canopic jars, which were believed to keep the organs safe. This is with the exception of the heart, which was left in place as it was believed to house all intelligence and emotion in the body. Once the organs were removed, The body was dried out with a mixture of salts and left alone basically to cure. Once that was finished, the body would be lightly cleaned, then stuffed to make sure any parts that may have sunk in or just needed a little extra fluff were nice and filled out. Post-stuffing, the body would be wrapped with hundreds and hundreds of yards of linen, with priests often anointing the bandages and writing sacred symbols on them to bless the body. After this, The body would be prepared for a last rites of sorts, where a priest would open the mouth by blessing different parts of the body and painting them with a variety of dyes and paints. After that, the body was entombed, then people placed their offerings in the tomb, then it was sealed off to be protected. And now that we've got all of that under our belts, let's get into the plants that were used in all of this. For starters, Cassia and cinnamon were often used to cover the scent of the body and help to preserve it a bit, and this worked because on top of holding their smell and being a huge status symbol of the time, both cinnamon and cassia are antifungals. They stop fungus by damaging the cell walls before the spores can really get started, especially yeast, which is kind of all over our bodies and, honestly, most things so preventing that yeast from growing really helps in preservation. Next up, we have cedar oil, which was used in anointing the body and was typically actually juniper versus true cedar. This oil would have been highly scented and likely also helpful in preservation as juniper has strong antimicrobial properties. Next up, we have henna, 
which would have been mixed with the cedar oil and used as a sort of dye on the hair, nails, and as a paint to decorate the bandages. And after that, we have juniper berries, which would have been placed on the body and around the tomb to kind of help mask the scent. So basically, they're like ancient scent beads that you would throw in the washing machine. I mean, whatever works. Onions were also sometimes called upon to help stop rot, and they were placed over the eyes, in the pelvis, and over the ears to help add an additional layer of wrapping that also happened to fight against microbes and bacteria that otherwise would have rapidly begun breaking down the body before the salt could cure it. A variety of resins, usually pine or myrrh, were also used to help seal the body and brushed over the wrappings to not just harden the bandages, but also to help preserve the body by once again fighting microbes and keeping out any external moisture. Sawdust and lichen were also often used as the stuffing we mentioned earlier, which was great because it was so easy to manipulate and doesn't often harbor bugs or anything, meaning that there would be no creepy crawly surprises over the course of this 70-day ritual. That's all I've got for this week, but I'll be back next week with another Monster Mash episode. See you then! Until next time, be kind to yourselves, be kind to the earth, and just like a plant, drink your water. If you liked the show, please subscribe and consider leaving us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Rooted.Pod. We're finally updating regularly on YouTube at Rooted.Podcast. And you can check out our website, RootedPod.com, for transcripts, updates, merch, and so much more. The show is written, produced, and hosted by me, I'm Grebner Gaddis, edited by Cat Friend of Friend Diagram, and our theme music was written and produced by Eric Cluxon. Rooted is a Henbane Media LLC production. <laughs>